So we're painting today instead. Everything takes longer in Boat World. That one, that chip. Way back there. Gather around all you floaters. Oh, wow, yeah, that's oh, deep nice. in there. Good news is, I can fit inside there. So we're going to paint the arch today so we can put the solar panel back on. And you can see where this stainless steel was in contact with the aluminium without a good barrier coat between it. It's really corroded it so we're going to clean that up as well and uh, put a proper barrier between them. The corroded stainless steel has uh, stuck to our magnetic screwdriver. It looks kind of pretty like a little magnetic forest. Mixing the paint to uh, paint the arch and also do the rudder and the keel, the other side of the keel. You may notice I'm wearing a different t-shirt to when we first started and said we were going to do it. <laughs> because that was actually two days ago because we, uh, we ended up having to do a lot more sanding and prepping than we were expecting. And those screws that we took out took about two hours. <laughs> so um, yes, so we're painting today instead. Everything takes longer in Boat World. Boat nap. It's about 40 degrees, I think, right now. We continued with the time consuming painting mission. Edge Prime, Primer, top coats, bottom coats, repeat. Slowly but surely we were making progress, but all of this happens over so many days. Once we had the arch painted, we then had the joy of trying to install the solar panel in 20 knot winds in the beating sun, standing on the edge of a sanded bare aluminium boat about 15 feet off the ground. Took a little doing, but we got there in the end. Before we can put the next layer of bottom paint on, we have to do inside the keel slot. The good news is I can fit inside there. The bad news is I'm the only one who can fit inside here. So I get the job of cleaning it out. As you can see, we were able to reach a fair way up, but way up in there, I'm the only one who can get to it. And then I'm gonna come down and sand the rest of this so that we can etch prime. After washing huge amounts of dust out of my eyes, I devised a wonderful plan to put safety over fashion. I got some good music. My tools. Back in the slot. I did get better and better at this job as time went on, and also found it a really good time to practice my singing and dancing moves. And of course another mission presented itself to us. Mr Nick, the marina dog, decided he'd say hello to a porcupine who wasn't very interested in making friends. I approached Big Nick like I would a bear. With those jaws, well, we have to be careful, but thankfully he does love me a lot. Tranquilo. Tranquilo. <laughs> Why is everybody looking at me? <laughs> Not only did Nick have a face full of spines, but he also had a condition called an oral hematoma. This is when the skin and cartilage area of the ear fills with blood, a little bit like a pillow or a pocket of blood in the ear. It's a cow going. Yeah. <laughs> you more the tail? Hey, just a little. <laughs>
He timed it quite well so that I was able to fix this at the same time as pulling all the spines out of his face. One by one by one. Gotta watch the spikes. Okay. Wow. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, here. Okay. Yeah. Ah, here, see. Oh, no, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh wow, yeah, it's deep mm -hmm. in there. Okay. Oh, strong one? Uh-huh. Yeah. Is there one right under the thumb? Or under... Under where? Uh... Under Ronnie's uh, finger. Ah, see. Yeah. Un poquito, so ye. Uh-huh. 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 Under Barney's thumb, did you say? Right by the right. finger. Ah, I see. I will warn you, this part gets a little more graphic. If you don't like blood, skip ahead. <laughs> so it's really good to remove those two because the one at the very back of the throat, they can migrate and go like into other areas of the body. With the spikes out, it was time to move on to his ear. The goal of this surgery is simple. Get all of the blood and clots out and then sew the ear closed. So I'm just trying to break up the clots and make his ear as flat as possible. Get as much of that shit out as you can. Hmm. He was full of blood there? Mm hmm. Blood and, and blood clots. Yeah. Yeah, so I've cleaned them out as best I can. And then. What's this you're doing? I'm just putting a little bit of local anesthetic in. It'll just help um, when he wakes up. Okay. So I'm, I put an incision in the middle of his ear to drain the blood here. And then what I'm actually doing is putting sutures on each side of his ear with the idea that it'll hold the two flaps of the ear together to stop them keep fit otherwise they'll just keep filling with blood and then you'll end up with the same problem over and over again um so i'm kind of like sewing the two sides of the ear together basically <laughs> I leave that open so that the blood can come out of that hole and then these stitches help squish the two parts of the ear together with the idea that then hopefully it heals flat instead of healing. Um, if yes. we don't do this, all that um, blood. blood clots, yeah. it like turns into scar and then his ear will be like, you know, it gets really small and this, it'll still be a bit funny <laughs> after mm -hmm. this, but it'll be better. Um, yes. Course. Yeah, so the idea is that it'll bleed for a few days, but the blood will come out of this hole and then hopefully um, not cause. Um, but he, he, he's, cause it's problems. supposed to heal by, by himself, or after a few days you're gonna do something. It should close on its own. Okay. Yeah, but we can we'll check it um, every few days and make sure it's going okay. But probably in a week it'll have healed down like this and then in another week it'll have like healed close um and by then this should hopefully have um kind of stuck together the rest of his ear that's what we try to do 
looks. So. Yeah, so he'll look a bit bloody and yucky for a few days. But. And about the spikes, just... Yeah, well, he's going to be on antibiotics and pain relief for the, um, <clears throat> for the ear, so that should just stop the spikes. But if you don't get them all out, like that one in the back of his throat, for example, if we left that one, what can happen is it migrates and then oh. it can cause problems like in... Um, I was saying a Ronnie, one dog in the United States, had it migrate into his brain. Oh. And so on, on post-mortem, like on the necropsy, they opened and then there was a the porcupine thing in his brain. brain, yeah. Okay. So it's better to try and get them off. Put this deep down into your ear holes. So he also has an ear infection. So he has an infection in this tube here of his ear, and that's probably why the the, the little blood vessel okay, burst because yeah. he would have been scratching it, and then it bursts and fills with um fills with <clears throat> blood. One final look. Oh, ban. I think we're good. Yeah. Good boy, Nikki. Sure you don't want me to castrate him? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's worth a try. <laughs> hey, Nick. And don't worry, the porcupine was just fine as well. You kind of see him on the video, I see. Now the porcupine can escape. <laughs> He's a big boy when you carry him like that, isn't he? <laughs> He's waking up a tiny bit after that, but not much. Finally, it was time to put the first layer of paint in the keel box. What a mission! I hope you enjoyed seeing the real-time play-by-play of how life on board sometimes gets. You can help us help animals like Nick by visiting our website, giving this video a thumbs up, sharing it, or becoming a patron for as little as a dollar a month. We give patrons some really awesome extras, like live updates really regularly from the boatyard and from our animal work. Until next time, stay chuffed everybody!